All right, guys. Why couldn't Team Avengers sign Steve Rogers? Hmm. Why? I don't know. They didn't have enough cap space. <laughs> <laughs> well, that rules out baseball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my my Yankees dudes. can sign anybody they want. Yep. Well. Yay. Well, watch the YouTube algorithm sync this video after that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Another episode of the Real Heroes Show. We've got uh, Corey, Nick, and Kevin here. And uh, to follow up on our, our last video earlier this week where we discussed, uh, you know, some spoiler review of WandaVision episode four, uh, today we're, we're going to dive into some new theories that came out of that episode. So um, we're each going to present a theory and then discuss the possibilities which in this day and age in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, they seem to be relatively endless. Um, yep. <laughs> so Nick has been texting us for two days now with a theory that's in his head, and he has uh, kept that shrouded in secrecy from us. So yep. Nick, I'm going to let you go first to just get this shit out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to I hear this. I want to hear this theory. Splain. Uh, splain it away, sir. Uh, okay, so we, we know in the beginning of the episode uh, where Monica walks, you know, past your mother's plaque where it says Maria Photon Rambo. Mm -hmm. um, in the comics, Monica Rambo actually becomes Photon herself uh, as she gains powers. Uh, she's also known as Pulsar and most recently uh, uh, under the name Spectrum. I think they might go in the pulsar spectrum route since they've already said her mother was was called photon but she could also maybe do that in in um uh, rem remembrance of her mother sure. um so basically they say monica was uh introduced as a second captain marvel and she gained superpowers after being bombarded by bombarded by extra dimensional energy produced by an energy disruptor weapon we already know that she's going to be in Captain Marvel 2 in mm -hmm. 2022. Could be a big connection there. But I think the biggest thing is, well, how would she be bombarded by extra dimensional energy that comes from an energy disruptor cannon? Well, she references the energy shielding of Wanda. How are they going to be able to possibly penetrate that? Penetrate that? Why would they want to penetrate that? Why would they want to open up some sort of you know, door or a hole or something along those lines to get in or out, possibly try and break it down if they can't, because um, whether it is Wanda or someone else that's controlling all this, how can they break that? How can they disrupt it, right? So my thought is, and my theory, that S.W.O.R.D. will have some sort of energy disruptor weapon, since that kind of goes right in line with their acronym, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that they're going to fire at this shield that wanda or someone else has created it's going to deflect or there's going to be some sort of error involved because of the uh possible miscalculation scientifically and it's going to affect and hit monica and she kinda, might seem fine at first kind of how the energy from the the kree hit carol back in captain marvel yep mm -hmm. uh, okay all right so I think that's what's going to happen to Monica. And then slowly, uh, maybe as this season progresses, if it happens somewhere within the next five episodes or maybe like the last three or after the whole sitcom portion is done, uh, we might see, uh, you know, a nice little snippet or a bit of an Easter egg as she kind of starts to transform, you know, some, something along those lines. But we won't really see full details until Captain Marvel 2 when maybe Carol Danvers comes back and sees that her friend now has powers similar to how she does. So interesting. Okay. I think we're going to get a little bit more about, uh, you know, the photon two or spectrum or pul of pulsar, but so you I think, think she's going to have her powers by the end of the show. I don't know if we'll, or, we'll or see at them least fully like or maybe exhibit them. them. Like, right. Well, you, yeah. you okay. think at least the the event 
where she gains her powers might happen by the end of the show. I think so, yeah. I think that's going to set it up for the future. Again, kind of putting this whole importance on WandaVision, there's so much that this is setting up for the whole phase four. Right. And that Monica obviously wouldn't, she wouldn't be in the show if it wasn't to have her set up and be seen as proton or photon or, or, or um, pulsar or spectrum, whatever, whatever, you know, uh, label they're going to give her for a superhero name. Um, but I think that's going to, I think it's going to play a, a part in okay. this, in this season for sure. Okay. That's my, that's my theory that uh, kind of got hyped up about. So <laughs> well, whatever, whatever keeps Tiana Paris around. Cause yeah, exactly. she's been awesome so far. Yeah. Give, her, she's, give she's her a fucking so movie. Um, yeah. Cool. Interesting one. Kevin, what do you think? So Nick's actually kind of plays into mine just a little bit. Um, and I didn't know that it did obviously until just now because, <laughs> uh, f- because I didn't know his theory until just now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've been saying for some time now, whether it's on here, whether it's offline, uh, that I think that they could use this situation as um, a way to introduce fantastic four um yeah and you know i know there's the the mention of like missing astronauts and yada yada but i i think it it might be more along the lines of um in the absence of tony stark what brilliant scientists might they have turned to um in order to develop some of these weapons like you're talking about or even some of the ai stuff that they have already been developing um, at sword while monica has been um, you know, in Snapland, wherever that was, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, could be Reed Richards. Um, so if if you are, that could be a really interesting way to introduce him as a character, as a brilliant scientist, um, to get them kind of into the universe, and then later on let us see what happens to them. You know, you're talking about interdimensional uh, energy. Well. It also sounds very familiar, right? So yep. um, th- there could there could be something there. Um, and we already know that Fantastic Four is coming to the MCU. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there's got to there's got to be a plot device somehow to introduce him. You can't just go. Meanwhile, across town, there's this guy, right. you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's probably not going to happen like that. So mm-hmm. um, so sword could be a really interesting way to to inject them in there. So, Kevin. Yeah. It, going along with that, what if the the missing person that's in witness protection is Victor Von Doom? Hey, you never know. I mean, it, it would mm. fall follow right in suit. And, and I think that that's Victor Von Doom is going to play an extraordinarily important role. I think yeah. in the next phase. I in in my opinion, he's the next Thanos. He's the next okay. big bad. Definitely um, candidate. Yep. That that's gonna you know, kind of <laughs> ruin the lives of everybody involved for some time, you know, um, and this could be, you know, them laying the groundwork for it. Introduction. Yeah. I, would I love it. I would love it. it. Yeah. I think it's funny. All, all three of our theories have to do with the stretching out of the universe and <laughs> like expanding something into something else. Sure. Um, because my theory is as follows. WandaVision takes place in New Jersey, right? Right, right. I'm from New Jersey, so I can say New Jersey's a shithole. Why would they pick New Jersey <laughs> to do this show? Right? So so go with me here. I thought for a second you were going to say my theory is that Corey Disbrow is going to be <laughs> in this show. No, God, no. Uh, this space I'm is the wit set guy. very, very much not camera ready. Uh, Hoffa's <laughs> the wit set guy. Um, no, so so yeah. the show is placed in New Jersey, and we found out in the last episode that there is a lot of, I think they said CMBR, which is mm-hmm. CMBR, a, yeah. uh, a form of radiation that, uh, you know, in the real world, uh, is radiation that is tied back to the Big, Big Bang, Bang. Yeah, which right. is the creation of the universe. Right. Uh, in Avengers Infinity War, uh, Wong says when they're at the Sanctum Santorum in New York that the Big Bang sent six elemental crystals out into the universe, which we know as the Infinity Stones. Uh, one of those, the Mind Stone, gave both Vision and Wanda their powers. Uh, now, I think that this is going to buck the trend a little bit 
from the comics. However, uh, I believe that the radiation that is emitting from where they are uh, will go a little bit nuclear by the end of this series, whether that's Wanda's fault or Vision's fault or whatever. And just down the road in Jersey City, New Jersey, that radiation is going to give superpowers to one Kamala Khan, AKA Miss Marvel, who has her own Disney Plus show coming out later this fall. Yeah. And flourish. <laughs> and flourish. Uh, yeah, I think the whole possibility of of the Inhumans, right? Like, I don't, I don't know if they're gonna go with that route. I mean, I, I think right. they should. In the comics, um, it's the Terrigen Mist, and it's the Inhuman right. stuff that gives her powers. However, right. this is so close geographically. Yeah, it makes me wonder if they're just gonna kind of gloss over that and and use this to give her her powers. Yeah, I mean, th this could have this could play a, a like a role in it too, right? I mean. Who who knows what uh, what Wanda's truly capable of? I mean, I went back and watched Age of Ultron, and just seeing how she could manipulate people's minds, uh, you know, and the the control that she really has. I mean, she's you know, this is going to show people that how Omega level she really is, yeah. and it's kind of like we were saying before. Monica goes in a twenty 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 three clothing, and comes out in nineteen seventies clothing. So mm -hmm. we had this theory before of what is in there comes out as is yeah so same, same thing happened with the beekeepers uh cable it turns into a jump rope yeah they all pass through rope. and then when they pull it out jump rope so right so, I'm, I'm so, so, so that stands to reason like if if whatever's going on in there uh is the same when it comes out um could she actually just resurrect vision dude uh, i mean does i think he, if he just if he walks out of that bubble does he stay vision yeah I mean, w maybe not with the Mind Stone. Right, um, but, but they lay the could... seeds for that in Infinity War. They talk about how he's part Jarvis, part Tony, part Banner. You know, right. he's not just the Infinity Stone. They, they, they kind of seed that I up already. Am. They really did. And, you know, like we've talked about before, they were attempting to extract what makes Vision Vision. Like, yeah, attempting to, to separate him from the stone at one point, which, uh, and they were like 99% of the way there, which actually tells you that it is possible to separate him from the stone, right? So he can, yeah. uh, or at least, you know, in their minds, he could have existed separate from the stone uh, just without maybe all of the same powers. He still would have had like all the nano abilities and all that kind of stuff. Right. He just wouldn't have had the, the mind stone. That, and I think we're also going to get Wiccan and Speed as the twins from Billy and, uh, Billy and Tommy. That's... Yeah. That's definitely happening at this point. And I still firmly believe that Mephisto is behind all of this oh, at yeah. this point. Yeah. Um, you know, Corey's idea, I think in the past of, you know, Wanda making a deal with the devil and all this kind of shit, like that's in, in my head, that's basically what's going on. Yep. And he may have even in turn amped up her powers a little bit. Um, that's a bad you know. thing. Crank, oh, yeah, crank for it sure. to 11. <laughs> For sure. And and mm -hmm. that may be a way to explain the fact that um, suddenly, you know, after Endgame, uh, Feige says, no, it's actually Wanda who's the most powerful person in the MCU at this point. And everybody's going, really? Why? We don't see that. Well, this <laughs> could be You'll the see. how that that happened. You know? I mean, the fact yep. that Thanos kind of shit his armor literally <laughs> and figuratively in, in Endgame when she was about to kill him. Uh, you know, he basically bailed on their entire battle plan because he thought that it was over for him. So yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she said one v one me noob, <laughs> and and almost lost. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, man. Like think about it. He he was able to pull the power stone out of the glove and punch Captain Marvel away, who's yeah. supposed to be one of the most powerful heroes in this. He took on Iron Man, Cap, and Thor at the exact same time. Fat Thor. relatively <laughs> had his way with them <laughs> whatever he had a bad ass beard so <laughs> out of shape thor <laughs> i mean yeah yeah steve rogers with mjolnir yeah and he still ended up getting beat yeah and, and uh, wanda had a beast yeah you so... mean you mean mew mew <laughs> mew mew yeah for darcy's sake <laughs> i kept i kept waiting to hear mew mew pop up because i mean she she had such a uh uh, you know a basis with thor 
and it was yeah. the same type of situation where they were investigating some kind of anomaly that had happened. You yeah, know, it was just I was kind of waiting for that little. Just wait till till Jane Foster shows up with Mjolnir, and Darcy oh, sees geez. her and is like, "Holy shit, what happened to you?" Jane, <laughs> yeah. Mew Mew. Mew Mew. Wow. I, I only thought that the big blonde guy could hold that. Right. <laughs> you mean Point Break? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So guys, I think that we we hit three home runs with those theories there. I think yeah, that's some all, good stuff. Yeah, I think so stuff. Hope you listen to Feige. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever whatever's planned is already planned. We're not gonna think that. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, uh-huh. what did he say? They've got like the next five or six years already in the pipeline planned out. of yeah. stuff that hasn't been announced already. Which is, yeah. They have an idea. They have a vision. It's mad genius. Something that yeah, well, DC does not have. <laughs> <laughs> so, something most franchises don't have. I mean, I know this that's, is a theory that's video. True. Like, does anybody ever just like sit back and think, wow, this is this like sprawling web of stuff that a lot of other studios have tried to do and mm-hmm. they've failed. And, yeah. and Marvel's been able to pull it off for you know a decade and a half at this point like it's insane yeah i i almost would maybe compare it to something like tolkien-esque who yeah. has just planned out everything to to this great extensive plan you know which granted we haven't seen all of it yet come into fruition with shows or movies but we will um but again just the depth that feige has sort of gone through and created uh you know in the mcu uh, it's it's nothing that's ever been done in our in our mm-hmm. time so yes yeah. it's, it's like whether you like certain movies or, or not like i mean you got to give credit to where's credit's due um yeah. and this is where we can kind of come up with theories for the next six years uh or next decade yep. uh to sort of see where things tend to play Shit, out we're, we're already talking about secret wars with yeah. chris <laughs> evans coming back and that's like 2027 or 2028 maybe Russo bros come on man yeah it definitely puts feige in line for contention for best producer of all time you know the the really great thing is that um with the with the wide breadth of material that you have from the comics it is really impossible to stick to the comics the comics don't stick to the comics you know, there's so many offshoots and, and multiple universes and what ifs and and retcons and all of this kind of yeah. shit. Yeah. There is no way, you know, you could if you did try, you'd be like, oh, no, we're sticking directly to the comics. There's some nerd out there that's going to go, no, well, according actually, to this other storyline, he didn't do that until four years after. I Like, it's always going to happen. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Feige and company have done this so well uh, that they that they have just used the comics as a guideline, mm-hmm. kind of a, you know, a, a framework, if you will. Yeah. Um, and they they've done it so well and, and paid homage where it was due and and, you know, been really careful with the characters and, and these IPs that um, most people, including hardcore uh, comic book fans, are OK with it. Yep. You know, you it's it's easy for them at that point to see this as something that lives separately from the comics yeah. because it's done so well and it's the characters that they love. Yeah. Um, and that in itself is the main thing that I feel DC's never been able to do. Yep. They have not been able to take this huge, rich universe that they've that they've built in the comics and stick to the essence of the characters enough um to to actually pull this off on screen you know you end up changing aquaman like almost fundamentally into something that you just think is going to sell tickets and it did that's fine yeah that's not aquaman that i saw um you know and and same thing goes with with you know wonder woman 84 and a a bunch of the other fucking dumpster fires that we've seen dc (laughs) produce you know we had this conversation just last night i think with uh, with our buddy David, but like if if Wonder Woman three comes out, we're all going to watch it. Mm-hmm. Regardless, and we're all yep. probably going to trash it later <laughs> on because how do you build off of that? Yeah, how do you build off of eighty four? Yeah, 
when you when you went so sideways <laughs> from so many years of good shit that's there yep. you know you you've got uh, there there were times when um for instance i i believe uh bruce wayne had a contingency plan for if superman ever got out of hand mm -hmm. his yeah. contingency plan was wonder woman that's how powerful wonder woman is supposed to be he felt that she was the only person in that universe that could go head to head with superman and stand a chance that's yeah. not the character we've seen on screen you don't so you mean far. kryptonite smoke bombs don't do it <laughs> god damn yeah he, he has contingency contingency plans for everyone though exactly technically except enough, but for green arrow <laughs> and green arrow was so pissed <laughs> <laughs> You don't take me seriously. You don't Bruce. think I'm a threat. Anyway, uh, oh, I could I man. could talk for hours about. Can't wait to talk DC about the Snyder Cut, boys. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> Snyder Cut's only uh, what six weeks away now. So that's uh, yep. Oh boy, the discourse redeem is going to be a good time. A lot Come of on, redeem it, Zach. All right, well let's uh let's wrap this bad boy up and go home, boys. Any last thoughts? I just gave you mine. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm. You're going Until on next week, again, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, uh, you know, if you guys like these theories, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a theory of your own, please go ahead, drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Uh, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, all the fun stuff that we tell you to do at the end of every single episode. Uh, we'll also be back next week with uh, more WandaVision breakdowns and speculation. Uh, whether it's just episode five or episode five and six, I saw a rumor online that they may drop two because some stuff leaked out. So who knows? Yep. Um, but you can rest assured that if it's there, uh, we're going to cover it. So uh, also make sure to check us out on our social media. And until next time, we will see you in the next video.